Good morning folks and welcome to the workshop of Armitage Leather. We're going to be making a pouch. Who doesn't want to make a pouch? This is just one video in a series of videos looking at pouches specifically. All the designs and templates, totally printable and you can print off the designs, they're in the pack, glue them to card and you can work from them. There's a whole video on your template so you can have a look at that. You can go to my website www.armitageleather.com forward slash shop and it's £12 to download the pack. It's 40 odd pages crammed full of information. If you print all the templates, often some of the pages you have to print twice because there's uh, a duplicate for different ends, you'll end up with 10 different designs of pouch. Now, if you were to use this pack just to cut your teeth, fantastic, you're going to learn so much. The video is going to help, the pack's going to help. If you want to make bushcraft items, perfect, you can make these pouches as intended, make 10 of each one, take them to a show, sell them, fund your craft, awesome and kudos to you for that. Your other option, and this is where I'd like to lean you towards, is to look at the value of the techniques contained in the pack and the videos. Also in the pack is a large explanation on increasing the size and looking at your seam tolerances of each pouch to turn it into a larger pouch, a bag, whatever you want it to be. So it's looking at taking that skill set and transferring it onto bigger items once you're comfortable with your techniques. So if you struggle with any of the techniques needed to make this pack or any one of the packs contained uh, in the series of videos, you can go to my Vimeo channel. It's an online resource of multiple videos, not just on the pouches or the techniques using the pouches, it covers a whole range for many different items. All the tools and materials used in the videos to make these pouches are listed at the back of the pack. They're all hyperlinked, so if you keep the pack online, you can just click and it'll take you straight to it. If you have any questions or see any glaring mistakes, drop me an email, let me know, I'll adjust. In this video, we're going to look at the two ounce tin short gusset pouch. So, print off the sections that are relevant to this pouch, cut your templates out, glue them to card, and we're ready to work. Here we have the beginnings of a two ounce tin short gusset pouch. And this is the template for the two ounce tin short gusset pouch and the short gu gusset itself. We're not going to include on this one the belt plate or belt loop. But if you look at the one ounce tin short gusset pouch, full gusset pouch, you will see there that on the full gusset pouch there is the uh, belt loop and on the short gusset pouch there is the belt plate so you can have a look at those how you add them is exactly the same all the marks are on this template if you wish to do so but we're just going to concentrate on the pouch itself for now now this is a little larger so i'm going to get rid of the tin this is the tin that's for and this is the sam brown stub we're going to use so i'm going to pop those out the way i'm going to use a ks blade seven stitches per inch iron to make all the holes Pipping punch, three mil hole punch. So they're all set and ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at making the holes for our pouch. The first thing we can do is look at the hole on the end for our Sam Brown stud, and we're gonna use a pipping punch. Now if you struggle with a pipping punch, because they are quite expensive, what you can do is put a four mil hole on it, and then cut yourself a slit. Just a short one, about half an inch long. Top end for the Sam Brown stud. We're gonna pop a three mil hole in there. That's sorted. When wrapped round the tin, this hole will meet this hole. It will all come together nicely. So, we're going to move this aside because the first piece of information that we need to get is how many stitches. Because the stitching 
either side of the gusset needs to correspond to the four rows of stitching on the body itself. So let me get rid of the body, zoom into the gusset and look at us making the holes for our stitching. What we will do then is we will take our iron and pop the first tooth onto that mark at the top. And we'll fully cover, we want the tooth covering both sides of that little dot and we will commit and at which point then we will sidle down towards the other and we will see there with one more hole that sits on that dot a dream and what we can do then is we can count the holes so We have 23, so we can write 23 on there. And we will do exactly the same on the opposite side, starting always at the top, working down, at the top, working down. So if there is any variation in these holes, the variation takes place at the bottom on both sides, not the bottom of one side, turn it round and then the top of the other because that would be a little bit awkward. I would twist it. So we're always working from the same side. So there we have our 23 holes either side of the short gusset. What we will do now is we will bring in the back section, and this is the top hole at the back. So we are working in towards the bottom. So again, exactly with as we did with the gusset we will start at the top hole so this tooth straddling that dot when we're happy that our placement is good we'll commit working our way down and we're there and they're exactly the same on the opposite side start at the top and work our way down. And this is the important thing. What we do now is we count our holes. And we have 23. So we have 23 holes front and back, 23 holes front and back. So let me add 23 holes to the front section and then we will look at taking our template to our leather. Just want to cover this point before we move forward. Now <clears throat> I've not edited the video so I've not looked at the quality of what you see me do. However uh, I can see that there is a very very mild variation in our stitch line. Now I have marked down from the top end up here 23 holes at the bottom of the hole the tooth is actually sitting over about a millimeter but it's sitting over a millimeter on both sides so the holes are consistent that's important and there are 23 of them so if we now look at the back or not the back but the uh, template itself we can see that that extension is repeated on the stitch line and that extension is repeated at the bottom of the front line the bottom of the back line on both sides so in truth I could go back to the pattern and extend these lines another millimeter and that wouldn't be an issue at all but in truth that would only matter if I could guarantee you were using KS blade punch number no. seven irons and I can't you, you may be using any number of different irons that you have available and the truth of the matter is that dot here is not a target it's a guide so the idea is not to land on it perfectly but get as close 
to it as possible. The distance between these two holes is a certain distance, but if you increase that distance by having 22 holes either side and stopping a little short of the dot or decreasing the distance by going over the dot slightly like I have, it makes absolutely no difference. What happens is this loop at the bottom of the pouch either is a little smaller or a little larger, which means this gusset drops down a millimetre or rises up a millimetre. In truth, it makes exceptionally little difference. And just to show you, I have two pouches, both with different size loops or holes. You can see there, it makes no difference at all. This being that close makes it difficult to stitch. This is an ideal distance, so it's close. But again, it's a guide, it's not a target. I just thought I'd throw that in there if you were having a crisis over this last tooth not hitting that dot perfectly. It doesn't matter. It matters when we're stitching all the way around the outside for a gusset, which is why we start from our centre line. And if our tooth drops short, as long as both of them are the same, again, that's absolutely fine. So, let's move forward, take it to the leather, start scribing, marking out, and then we cut out our pieces. The template is fully prepared. So what's next is let's take it to the leather. We'll get rid of the short gusset for the time being. The next course of action is to find a nice piece of leather. I'm happy with that. Got some striping going on. This is a piece of two and a half mil thick Metropolitan Lamport leather. It's dyed through shoulder. Really, really nice. Very easy to work. Very forgiving. Beautiful to stitch. So what I'm doing first is scribing up all of my external lines. And this is the lovely thing about having such a firm card to work to. I shall take my pipin punch and press that on. I shall take my 3 mil punch and press that on. And then I shall use a sharp scratch all and I shall mark the beginning and end of my four rows of stitching. If you're adding a loop or a plate this is the point that you'd mark the beginning and end of your further two rows here. I'm not, that's done. So, what's left to do now is trim or cut out. So we're following that lovely line that we've just created. Nice bit of pressure, very important cut. Let's not fight the leather. Let's score the leather nicely. Come back, follow it through, take our time. We have a very consistent and even cut. We can see no line on either piece of leather. That's a good cut. If we hammer at it with the intention of going through in one hit, yes, we have a very nice polished edge, but a polished edge in the wrong place is no use. So don't fight it. Take as many cuts as you need to have a slightly less polished edge. Although, to be fair, it's not bad. But an edge where it needs to be. And again, constant confirmation of what we're doing is right. Three and a half mil thick leather. So it sits up against this two, uh, sorry, two and a half mil thick leather. So it sits nicely up this three mil thick cutting edge. Absolutely beautiful. Spin it round. 
do exactly the same at the top end and again we're confirming that line that we drew scribing out fits perfectly with the angle that we get if we don't move it that we get when we put our square up against it everything comes together beautifully and then trim those corners off I'm going to trim these corners off and then we're going to have a look at placing our stitch lines in detail so let me do this come back to the board in a moment I've cut my body out, cut a strip of leather, the right width for the two short gussets and split it down to the correct thickness. I have coffee, we are good to go. So here is my short gusset, I can set that aside with a piece of leather and I have my marks already on my leather for my stitching. So what I'm going to do because I can always pick a tool up and change it without knowing. I'm going to go back and confirm that my dividers are still set to 4mm, and they are. So, I have on the back, and we follow the same process as we do on the pattern, from my top hole on the back to the bottom hole on the back, I will run a divider line down, bottom hole on the front to the top hole on the front. I'll run a line up, spin it over, and do exactly the same on the left hand side. Top hole to bottom, bottom hole to top. And we are sorted. So, next thing to do, let's pop out that pipping punch hole. Not quite, let's hit it again like we mean it. No! It's me trying not to shake the camera. I need to shake the camera. I know exactly the same again. 3mm hole at the front for the post. We are good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in our pad and our irons. And we're going to work exactly the same way that we did when we were doing our template. We have, and we have it written down somewhere, refer back to it, 23 holes. Did we write it down? We did, 23 holes, so we've confirmed. So we know it's 23 holes we need. So what we will do now is we will start top on the front, right hand side. So I'm gonna confirm, give it a gentle kiss make sure that everything lines up we're happy we are we'll go back and we will commit i've got the biggest maul in the world i think i will downsize far too large far too big so that's giving me 12 holes if i overlap one hole that takes me down to that mark give it a kiss and they line up beautifully. I'm going to come back a couple of holes because I think I'm running off line a little bit there. There we go. And then bring it back up to where it wants to be. Happy with that. And thump. Never be frightened about checking. One, twenty-two, twenty-three. 23 sorted exactly the same now on the left hand side start on that mark at the top it's in the right place we know it's in the right place it's on the template give it a kiss make sure beautiful it's on the template we follow the template it worked we transferred from the template to the leather it worked, but we can always confirm. We can always go back and check. I'm going to overlap a couple here just to make sure I'm on the straight. 
I drove that in there, didn't I? Went back to my 23. So, exactly the same again, except now on this part, I'm starting at the top, working down, working towards this gap in the middle. If this gap increases or decreases from that listed, it doesn't matter. As long as the top hole on the back, the top hole on the front are constant and the same amount of holes are used to go towards each other, it will work. Simple as that. Your issue will come if you get your measurements wrong and you start at the top here, work your way up, and start at the end here, work your way up. That's where it'll change. But we're working towards a curve, this bit down the bottom, so always work towards that curve, work towards that curve. Top hole back, top hole front, that's what we're doing. That's where our consistency lives. Change that and we can introduce errors that do some bizarre things to our pouch that we don't want. So to avoid it, introduce that level of consistency. So, I was gonna cut to the end, so you didn't have to watch me do this, but as it happens, you've watched me do it. So, four rows of holes, all 23 long. The next thing now, let's bring our gusset back. We will go to our trusty cutting edge, nice and thick, and what we're going to use is a square, and we are going to trim off one end, nice and square. Nice and slowly, nice and gentle. Don't fight the leather. If you go too hard, what will happen is you'll drag that leather out from under the rule, and you'll have that little kick that I dare say some of you may find familiar. So, we're good. We have a measurement somewhere. No, we don't. Gonna have to make it up, Nige, you've lost it. I have lost it. Found it. We have a measurement here. And what we can do is we can pop the card because we're happy the measurement on the card is correct. We're happy that we've cut out the card correctly. So we can use that to our advantage. We can still use the square to ensure that that angle is a perfect right angle. I can see there the square lines up with the line that I've just scribed nicely. So it was a good scribe. So that confirms that the template is square. Move that to one side. Do exactly the same again. Pop it on the end and scribe. Bring it to the end of the cutting edge. Line it up against the spine. Square up against the spine of the cutting edge. And again, I can see that line is perfectly up against the edge of the square nice and gentle with the knife and I have two short gussets exactly the same length perfect exactly the same length as that all three line up a dream so next course of events a stitch line down either side we can then Pop our four mil mark on the end, so we know where we're working from. And two, and do exactly the same here. Now, there may be an element of variation. One reason would be that we've just split this leather down and we put it under duress. This leather may be the correct length. What may happen is it could shrink. It could, it might not, but it could. So what we're going to do is going to decide on an end. 
So we'll draw an arrow and we'll draw the arrow at the bottom. The reason being is if you draw the arrow at the bottom, when it sits inside the pouch, that arrow is down here on the inside. So as you open the pouch and look inside, you'll never see that arrow. If you draw it at the top, you'll see it. So we'll pop that back in there. So that's the end we're starting from. So we have our four mil mark from the end and we're working now down towards the arrow because the arrow is pointing towards the top. Give it a thump, overlap one, come down towards the bottom, everything just lines up. An absolute dream, look at that. So the next course of events is going to be adding our crease. And to be fair, we're not going to crease anything until we've taken these corners off. So how you do this is entirely up to you. You've seen me use a corner cutter, uh, which is a real cracking little bit of kit. I think on this occasion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a coin and I'm going to cut around the corner with a coin. So let me go and find a small coin and then we'll look at that. So. You've seen me cut round corners any number of times. Recently, you've seen me cut round corners using a corner cutter. I'm going to use a coin. I've got a dime. It seems the only coins I can find... I'm in the UK. I'm in England. And the only coins I can find at the workshop at the moment are American coins, because I keep on putting them in little pouches. Um and bring them home and that's they're then just left on the workbench so uh that's all i've got laying about at the moment so i'm going to try and do this without getting my head in the way i'm going to use the spine of the knife turn it upside down put it against the edge of the leather put the coin up against the edge of the leather that way do exactly the same here and then just confirm there and there that we're happy what i'm going to do then is straight lines the more straight lines that I introduce to this process, the smoother the curve will be. Plenty of force down with the thumb. And when we take that off, there's our curve. So spin it round and do exactly the same on the other side. Spine of the knife against the leather. Confirm, when we're happy, a series of straight lines. Plenty of them. And so we're around and again. Now I put plenty of pressure onto that leather with my thumb. So I've got a couple of marks. Take a bone folder and just rub them out. They will come out no issue at all. And when we work it, it's going to come back up and it's going to get some juice on it anyway. So, creasing. Again, we've done the purse crease and we've done the dividers as a crease and I'm, I'm really happy with the divider now what we have done in the other video with the full gusset pouch is we heated the dividers to go round this leather that was the um, oh, that was the same as this that was the Lampor what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this without heat I'm just going to do this cold I'm just going to press nice and firmly, be accurate, be comfortable. As you come down to turn your leather, make sure you've got enough space, and I'm moving stuff off camera here, to make sure I've got enough space for me to turn this piece of leather. So I'm going to come down to my curve, or the curve that I've cut here, and as I begin to go onto it, I'm going to keep the tool where it is and I'm turning my leather and then back down towards the straight. 
and as I come to this side I'm going to do exactly the same again turn the leather and then follow it down that's just pressure I shall then do the gap between the stitching the top end and then the gap on the other side I shall then run a little bit of a crease at either end of the gusset. Finally I'm going to bevel. Now I have these Polisanto bevelers sent to me by a chap in Korea called Polisanto, handmade. He sent me the one He's now sent me the zero and the two, so this is nice for thicker leather. So I'm going to have a play with it. And these are, first and foremost, super sharp. But really nice. I'm not entirely sure that's heavy enough for this leather, but I need to find out before I say anything to the chap. So I am playing with them now to make sure, let's get rid of that otherwise that'll kick up and then we'll do the inside of the flap and again this is quite nice sharp but what I'm going to do is as I get to this curve I'm going to begin to slide off the end turn the leather was what I meant to say and do but I didn't follow it through so it's always difficult applying pressure to an external curve force dictates you should be going in a straight line and then we do exactly the same on the outside beautiful so the next thing that I will do after this and you don't necessarily need to see me do it is I shall slick all the edges so they're nice and smooth, all the fibres are flat and again an another little sort of touch on it, these are <laughs> remarkably sharp. Uh, another little touch on that is you can actually slick too much prior to edge coating. So I'm just going to do these, I'm going to come back now, I'm going to try, I'm going to come back to the number one. Uh, you can actually slick too much so you can make your edges so smooth and so shiny that your product, your in my case edge coat, won't stick. What you will find is as you add the beeswax and you begin to burnish up, the edge coat comes off because you've slicked everything down so much it won't stick. So the idea is to add some moisture, this is rough, feel it, add some moisture, slick it down, smooth, not shiny, not glass. We'll come to that stage once we put the wax on. So you want it smooth and nice and even. Once it's smooth and even, good enough, then we can add the edge coat. Moving on, we're now ready to stitch it together. It's a simple three part pouch. The short version is the Sam Brown stud will get added in a moment, but this is going to fold over. These two edges will be stitched together with the short gusset, then this will fold over and we can see there actually, I don't know if you can on the video, but the holes line up beautifully. Everything is coming together and that's our short gusset pouch. So. We can stitch these together dry, no glue. You watch the other videos, you will see that works. But what we can do is add a little bit of glue. So we can find our last hole, which is down here. We can take our square, checking for that last hole again. In fact, I'm just gonna open that up very, very slightly on both of these because I can't quite see it. I can now just reach across and I will put 
my square on my edge line. So this stops me going beyond with the um, sander and stops me going too far into the leather as well. And I will just rough up this area here. And I will do exactly the same on the opposite side. A glue I use for situations like this is Evo Stick Impact Glue. It's a contact glue and the idea behind it is you put a layer on both parts of the leather, you allow it to touch dry and then you press the two pieces together and you get an instant and permanent bond and it is a permanent bond. Now, I get asked a lot, where can I get it in the US? And I don't think you can but I went over to the States recently and somebody brought in for me to play with some barge cement and it worked exactly the same way. It smells the same and I would suggest it pretty much is the same. So I'm just going to use a little spatula. I've fallen back to my old tricks. In fact, I'm going to bin that. I don't know why I'm doing that. I went out and spent a whole pound on a hundred of these. And I fell back into old habits and just got a piece of leather. And we're just going to ride this in to the edge. Doesn't need much. I'm not going to need it to take an awful lot of strain. But what we are after. We are after these two edges bonding together so we get a nice clean edge down here and once we have stitched our two pieces of leather together or once we've glued them together and stitched them we can finish them as one piece of leather. So a good bond will help us get that solid edge that we can give a little bit of a sand to, lick it, slick it, and glue it together. Now we need to work these out. So that is pointing up, so that is my left hand side, albeit it's on the right at the moment. because you don't want to get this glued up on the wrong side and then find out you've got no choice but to put your arrows upside down and you just worked against yourself. So laying out is a nice visual way. Our glue is now dry to the touch so what we can do is we can pick up our leather. We can find the bottom hole as it were and the top hole with a needle and at which point then because we've spun it around we can see our arrows will line up where we want them to be so we can put one needle in the bottom hole one needle in the top hole and we can see there that we have the ability to bring our leather nice and close without worrying too much about the holes not lining up. And then we can ride that up. I'm not applying any pressure, not at the moment. I'm just riding it in. Take that needle out, lift it, and press. And then coming down towards this section, making sure I have a nice line, which I don't. There we go, and press. So that's that side done. And then what we'll do 
just to make sure we're happy. We'll tap down and that's as good as you like. Move it in the camera, Nige. And we'll do exactly the same now on the opposite side. Give it a press. And secure that bond. And we're good to go. We can now stitch these together. And once we've done that, we can then put the Sam Brown stud in place, glue the other side, bend it round, and we will see how easy then this bends back on itself for placement. So let me go to the clam, stitch these, secure them. I will then give this a light sand just to give it a nice even finish, bevel, lick, slick, black it up wax it or I shall do it the same old fashion as I did the rest and then we are done. So bear with me. The gusset tabs have been stitched to the front. The front has been sanded just to give it a nice even edge, beveled, slicked, blacked and beeswaxed and that's sorted. So what's next now very very quickly is we will slap on our hardware Just to the front there and then just a screw. Now you should add a little bit of Loctite to those threads because if you have something like this that you can't get to that screw at the back once the pouch closed you don't want it coming loose because you won't be able to tighten it up again. I haven't. These are just going to be little show pieces floating around the workshop uh, but if you're going to have it to use and you're going to rely upon it then stick some Loctite on that thread and lock it into place so it's not going to come off. The next thing is now we don't need to rough up the back of the tabs because they've been split so the fibres are nicely exposed. What we are going to do is rough up this section here and we're going to take our square to ensure that we don't go beyond where we want to be. So there's my last stitch up here. So I'm going to put this square over here and I can see my last stitch down there. So I can take a little bit of care and just ensure that I stay within the confines of that stitching because I don't want rough leather exposed beyond the gusset and I don't want to see glue beyond the gusset either. So again, the Evo stick impact contact glue a little bit of a paddle we don't need much it's only a little bit and ride it down within the confines of our holes and where we've just sanded up with the gusset tabs glued into place stitched edges finished bent them back a little bit to give us some stability and applied a bead of glue to both the inside of the areas that we're going to stick together. We're ready now to fold our piece round. So what we can do here is we can bend it around and then place it on its side. So we're going to have the back facing us. I'm going to take a couple of needles and just poke them in the first and last holes so we can see the needle poking through there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bend and hold our gusset. So we'll bend the pouch round. It all gets a little bit fiddly. But what we'll do is we'll locate the first hole of the gusset. And then the last hole. Did I mention fiddly? There we go. So, at which point now I can use my right hand just to keep it and if we've got a couple of blocks or a couple of weights just to hold it more so the better so what we're going to do now is we're going to begin to line up our top section Let's bring that in a little bit so we make sure that the top of the leather is nice and proud with the top of the body 
and we begin then to work back and what we'll find is that will hold and we'll do exactly the same on the other end and at which point then we can begin to even out and there we are our first and last hole are aligned we'll have a look at the level that's nice so what I can do now is begin to press and with that pressed in place I can take those needles out. We can put it over a block and we can tap that down just to close up those joins at the edge a little but in essence that side is done. This glue will make sure that stays there. Turn it over and we do exactly the same on the opposite side. We have the luxury now of the other gusset actually holding our pouch closed a little so again we use needles to locate the first and the last hole in both the body and the gusset and again we bring the leather using the needle to a line looking at the top and then working down towards the bottom looking at that alignment and then working our way through the middle and give that a squeeze and then all of a sudden we can see the beginnings of our pouch coming together so it gets a little difficult with tapping down so we can use something like a steel block and what we can do there is we can just rest that edge over our block and tap down over our edge closing off this seam here nice and tightly that's a good bond spin it over the other side and do exactly the same again Again, closing that off there we have an absolute sterling bond we've got a little bit of glue lurking around here so the next course of events very simply go to the bench I'm not going to make you watch me stitch you've seen me stitch any number of times but to all intents and purposes we will stick this in the clamp now we could stick a block in open our clamp right up and potentially pinch the whole thing that is a possibility or we can just pinch this section here and it's going to be a little loose but nonetheless the holes are already made for us so it's not like we're going through it all the big thing about keeping your leather as close to the top of the clam as possible to stop it from moving is when you're putting an awl through if you put the awl through and the leather moves the, the hole will come out in a different place on the back if the holes are already made and it moves it's not an issue because we're seeking a hole that already exists so if we have a little bit of wobble going on when we come to put our needle in it's just a case of hunting and seeking and the holes are already there so it's not as vital so we can hold it a little looser in the clam if you have something like this dream factory clam these these are absolutely stunning little toys we can actually pop it all the way in and i may well use this and then what we find is there's our grip there but if we loosen this off we can pop that on the bench and actually bend it all the way so when it sits it's sitting like this so that actually could be quite nice so i'll tell you what let me set this up and then i'll show you i have my dream factory clamped to my bench that's ready to go so what we can do is loosen this one off and actually tilt the whole thing towards me at which point now what i can do is slide he said knowingly That's as far as I'm going to get it and then close it up like so. 
So I have a reasonable grip. It's not the best of grips, but it's good enough. And it's one of those that actually the clamp tilting is quite helpful. So let's thread up my needles. For those interested on this particular little pouch I am using a couple of John James number no. 4 needles and a 0.6 tiger thread in yellow. I'm following the adage brown leather brass furniture yellow thread and we're going to stitch and we will have this issue of this opposite side being in our way. It's not a straightforward stitch. We're stitching, if you like, against a wall. But with all our holes made and correctly placed, it really doesn't present too much. It's a little awkward. But as you get to making more complex items bigger you will come across these situations where you just simply have to adapt there's the back stitch is sorted and I will continue stitching towards me as normal so if you're going to make something like this on a very very regular basis I'd be inclined to look at having a bar to include in the clamp, just to keep life simple. But if it's a one-off, you make do. I'm a bespoke maker, I don't know what I'm making next. So I have learned to adapt what I have, because it's not worth me buying a new clamp for every different thing that I do, because I may spend all that money and never use it again. Adaptability. Necessity is the mother of invention. If you can come up with something, then do so. But folks, I am stitching, I won't make you watch. This little clam is working really, really nice. It's a little travel clam that I picked up so I can take it with me when I go places. And I've got to say, for something like this, it's working really well. So, let me stitch both of these pieces. Once I've stitched both of these pieces, I'll give this edge a little bit of a sand just to clean it up. I will then bevel, lick, slick, edge coat, beeswax and burnish. And then the pouch will be done and I will see you back on the bench in but a moment. And there we go. That is the short gusset, gap in the bottom, two ounce tin pouch. Now I've left the loop off the back. There's only so many loops I can add to a pouch. I don't wear them, I'm not going to use them, but I will actually use this because I'll put stuff in these tins all the time, especially if I'm traveling. I'll put cables, tins, uh, tins, yes I have a tin of tins, uh, cables, needles, uh, sharps, if I'm travelling away to places, I'll put my blades in there. Absolutely fantastic little idea uh, to keep them safe. Then put them in a nice case. A little bit of presentation when you get them out, that sort of thing. I don't do as much bushcraft as I once did. But if I did, again, that would be an awesome fire starting kit. Um, fishing kit, little first aid kit, water purification, whatever you want. If you're into your bushcraft these are perfect so proof of the pudding the tin snug but it wants to be you don't want it too tight otherwise uh, too loose otherwise it's going to rattle around plus and this is the most important thing if you're wearing this if you are going to use it for bushcraft you're out in the environment it's going to get wet it's going to get damp and this leather will begin to give if we make it too loose to start with it'll be a little too loose at the end so you want it snug bend it over 
and there we go closes with our Sam Brown stud I like it I, I do like it I like these simplistic two ounce tin pouches so here we have this one keeps on twisting for some reason uh, here we have the two two ounce pouches full gusset short gusset both exactly the same size both do exactly the same job I really like them you're traveling abroad or something like that and you want to put something special that fits in a tin great little addition into your luggage put a belt loop on use them for bushcraft a myriad of uses honestly and not, if you if you smoke people still do apparently put your tobacco in it um but the the one thing to remember above all is this is a foundational pouch this is a great place to cut your teeth once you have an understanding of your seam tolerance knowing how much to allow on your leather for your seam with your gusset you can then increase the size and all of a sudden we have a camera case whatever you decide to use it for we can go for the full gusset system add four inches to the height add six inches to the width whatever that be and all of a sudden we've got a handbag it's, it's choices it really is it's now your time to take this design practice with it get comfortable with it <clears throat> if you want to make tin pouches like this the two ounce the one ounce the, the whatever it is you decide to do and sell them as they are brilliant if you can make money from that that's fantastic you are welcome to do so a little bit of credit would be nice uh, but if you have the foundational skills laid out have an understanding of how now a pouch goes together to then increase its size and turn it into a bag you're building on these skills and that's what it's all about so folks i, I can't make the video any more complicated it's four rows of stitching it's three pieces of leather it is a very very simple pouch but you can get yourself the pattern pack and you can work from it and then you can build onto that go and play enjoy have fun thanks for watching